Scientists have been researching fusion energy since the 1950s. They claim that fusion energy is a clean and abundant energy source that we really have to develop if we want to meet the growing energy demand of our civilization. But how does fusion energy work and will everything run by nuclear fusion in the future? Welcome to The Futurist. Join us in this video as we explore fusion energy and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our content about future technologies. Let's go! Nuclear fusion energy has been the dream of scientists for decades. This technology could be the key technology for solving the world's energy problems and could also help to power a population of 1 billion people in underdeveloped countries in the world that currently have no access to electricity. In nuclear fusion, atomic nuclei are supposed to fuse and thereby generate vast amounts of energy. So, when the atomic nucleus of one deuterium fuses with one tritium nucleus, it gives one helium nucleus and a free neutron. With this process, one gram of fuel releases 90,000 kilowatt hours of energy, which is approximately equal to the energy production of 11 tons of coal. And the best part of it is that deuterium, also known as heavy hydrogen, is found abundant in our oceans. And the tritium, which is a light radioactive gas with a relatively very low half-life of 12.3 years, is easily produced out of lithium. Because these materials are abundant on Earth, it could ensure cheap energy production in the future. But let's have a closer look on this complex process to have a better understanding and why it took decades for scientists to figure it out. Therefore, we tried to break this process down for you and explain it in the simplest way possible. So if you enjoy this video and think it's helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Nuclear fusion is about merging two atomic nuclei together. An atomic nucleus consists of protons and neutrons and are charged positively. So two positively charged nuclei will push each other off, just like two magnets where the same poles repel each other. The electrostatic force called Coulomb energy is responsible for this and this force increases the closer two nuclei get together. And if two nuclei get close enough to each other, nuclear fusion occurs. And close enough means approximately 2.5 femtometer, which is quadrillionths of a meter. To achieve this, it requires extreme high temperatures and pressure. Inside the sun, 15 million degrees Kelvin and 200 billion bar pressure are required for nuclear fusion and thus hydrogen becomes helium. On Earth, in turn, it is near to impossible to recreate these high amounts of pressure. So the only possible way to generate nuclear fusion is by increasing the temperature. In fact, to something like 100 to 150 million degrees Kelvin. High temperatures are so important because it affects the speed of the particles. The higher the temperature, the faster the particles. And if the particles hit each other with a very high speed, nuclear fusion happens. You may ask yourself now, how does this process generate energy? You've probably heard of Einstein's formula E equals mc squared. So the energy equals mass times light speed squared. Different elements have different masses. If deuterium and tritium merge into helium, energy is released because helium is lighter in mass. In summary, two nuclei merge into an element with a lighter mass and the difference is released in the form of energy. And the great thing about nuclear fusion is that there are no high radioactive leftovers that we have to stow for thousands of years like it is in nuclear fission. Just some that will radiate for a few decades with low radiation which we can handle pretty well in the meantime. Additionally, disasters like Fukushima or Chernobyl are not even possible because the plasma cools down really fast if something goes wrong. And this is also exactly the problem scientists have struggled with for decades. If the plasma, the hot ionized gas, comes in touch with the walls of the reactor, it cools down really fast. For this reason, the plasma has to be held floating in a vacuum without touching the surface of the reactors. Inside the reactor, this is implemented with extremely complex magnets. 
This is also one reason why nuclear fusion energy is gaining momentum right now. Because with the help of supercomputers, all these factors are much easier and better to calculate. There are several projects in the world that are currently focused on the development of fusion energy. The international project ITER, for example, is the most famous project in this field. It is an international nuclear fusion research and engineering mega project that aims to replicate the fusion process with the use of the tokamak reactor. It was officially initiated in 1988 and 35 countries have joined forces to tackle the challenge. Some of these countries also run their own fusion energy projects to avoid being completely dependent on ITER. China, for example, made some big progress with the experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, also called EAST, by which China aims to build an artificial sun for energy production using fusion energy. They have already shocked the world with record-breaking success. And Germany has built the Stellarator, another reactor type, in the experiment called Wendelstein 7X, with the help of supercomputers, to calculate the construction of the superconductive magnets. There are also several more projects in this field, but these are topics for another video. But how realistic is it to supply everything with nuclear fusion energy in the near future? If we look at it historically, it seems bad for fusion energy. Since the invention of the nuke, Edward Teller and Enrico Fermi suggested generating electricity with nuclear fusion. Repeatedly it was promised that in the near future it would be possible to produce electricity out of nuclear fusion, but it never came true. This is also how the joke among scientists arose that nuclear fusion is only 30 years away and will always be. But this time there are strong indications that we are really not that far away anymore. The nuclear fusion reactor, ITER, located in the south of France, is planned to be completed by 2025. Also, more and more countries are interested in investing in the development and research of fusion energy. Even if we know that it will take 10 more years and several tests and research before it will be put in operation, we can see that things are finally progressing for fusion energy. Currently, it is very hard to predict when and if nuclear fusion will supply our civilization. From our sun, at least we know that this concept works. And with rising energy problems worldwide and climate change, political willpower will arise to find a solution, which in turn will probably lead to bigger investments for nuclear fusion energy. What do you think about nuclear fusion? Do you think that it will be a reality sometime soon to produce energy out of nuclear fusion? And what do you think is the most promising project in this field? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like if you did. And subscribe to our channel to see more content about future technologies and events. And see you in the next one.